again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, this week it is almost officially summertime, and I think a lot of us have vacations on the mind. I myself am a huge beach girl. I love the beach, so I thought we would transport ourselves to the beach today with a fun rainbow-themed surfboard painting for this wonderful month of June. So I have my four standard brushes for today. I use these in most of my classes. Your brushes don't need to be the exact same as mine, but they should be the general same sizes and shapes. So I have a three-quarter inch square wash brush, and then I have three pointed brushes, a size 10, a size three, and a size three over zero. I'm gonna put those in my water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I have to start with for today's background step, I have a fair amount of white. I have the two blues that I like to use. I have a cobalt blue as well as an ultramarine blue. And then for my sand color, I have a little bit of burnt sienna brown and just a pinch of cadmium yellow. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. I think we're ready to jump on in. So for the first part of today's background, we're going to do like thirds for our three different areas. So they're gonna be the sky up here, and then we're gonna have the ocean, and then we're gonna have the sand. So just start thinking about that as we start to lay our colors down. I'm going to grab my largest brush, and I'm going to start with some cobalt. So my cobalt blue is a blue that is a little bit more of a true blue, whereas our ultramarine blue has a little bit of red in it, tiny bit, uh, which makes it slightly more purplish. Both absolutely gorgeous, love both those colors. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my cobalt blue into the sky and then I'm going to do my ultramarine down for my ocean. So I wanna do my first third and I'm gonna go across the canvas here horizontally. I always like to sort of look at the textured canvas um, because it's in little, cross hatches there so that you can follow the straight line but we'll have a couple chances to make a straight line here on the horizon too so don't worry if your line isn't perfect you can adjust then I'm going to grab a little bit of a lighter light blue again this is my cobalt and that's actually maybe a little bit too light kind of somewhere in between there I want to have a little bit of color variation in my brush strokes. So I have my big square brush, moving my brush all different directions. I'm going to go right along that horizon line that I just created, covering the line and filling that top third with our light cobalt and white blue. Very pretty. Work on our way from the top down and from the background to the foreground, as we usually do, although you don't have to. There's many ways to paint and many of them are correct. I would say the only way to mess up a painting is really muddying your colors, um, but your brush strokes are gonna look different. The amount of water that you use is gonna look different. Your technique can look different. It's sort of like playing music, where the only thing that you really don't want to do is play off key, right? <laughs> but there's so many different artists, just like there's so many different types of musicians, and that is your own beautiful style. For me, I use a fair amount of water uh, to keep everything going kind of nice and smooth and soaking into that canvas texture, especially with our background steps, uh, where you have this bare primed canvas. That's just big and for paint. <laughs> All right, let's mix up our ocean color now, which is gonna be pretty much the same idea, only a light, mm, sort of medium saturation of this 
amazing ultramarine blue love that color and i'm going to go right across that same horizon line with my ultramarine and a little bit of water i always like to blend it into my paint here on my palette paper And I'm going all the way across, and this is your second chance here to make a straighter line. This is going to be the horizon line that you keep. So go over it a couple times. The blue should have really good coverage power on that lighter blue. And I'm gonna take that gorgeous ultramarine a little bit further down. Remember, we're thinking thirds. But then I'm going to rinse my brush I'm going to do some waves, and they're going to be really simple waves. So I'm actually just going to take some white. I'm going to bring that white right to where my ocean is going to end, where the waves are crashing, and where the sand starts. Just getting that white on the canvas here. And then I'm going to work my way up towards my blue. And then I'm going to grab an in-between color to help me blend. Okay, but it doesn't need to be a perfect blend, but we do want to get that darker, more saturated blue blended a little bit lighter into our white. Like so. This is a great practice blend. Sometimes it's harder to blend one color to the next rather than blending a color to its lighter version of itself. So this is really good practice for us. And then let me grab my medium sized brush and on top of that gorgeous blend, I'm going to just have a little bit of like gentle waves crashing. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my more saturated blue and just going to kind of swoop my way across here creating some stripes, very quick, fairly, I would say heavy handed actually. I'm doing a motion where it's kind of lay at the beginning and then I push down and then pull the brush up again. And we'll get a little bit of wet on wet blending with our beautiful blue, hopefully. And we're gonna get some nice back and forth stripes and then once you have something that looks like, yeah, maybe that could be waves, then go ahead and call it good. Because <laughs> you can easily overwork this. But once you do, it'll just overwork into a nice gradation again, and then you could try again uh, if you need to. Um, but now we have one third left, which is gonna be our sand color, which should be super simple. I've used a lot of white. I think I might need a little pinch more. All right, a little bit more. I always end up using a lot more white than I do with my other colors, usually. All right, and super simple. We're just going to mix up an easy sand color. And I just took all of my yellow there. We're gonna start with a slightly darker version of a beigey brown. So let's say mostly beige or mostly a uh, burnt sienna and white with that pinch of yellow added in and your sand color can totally be unique i'm gonna do a little bit of like a curvy brush stroke and this darker color is going to be up where the sand is wetter and with this square brush remember that you can use it both ways so you can use it flat and you can also use it to make a thinner line I'm going to go across a couple times and then pull that beige a little bit further down and then grab some white or like a really light beige. I had enough beige on my brush still, so I just grabbed some white and we're going to do a little bit of an easy gradation from beige to lighter beige. You can blend right on the canvas too. It is very hot and very dry here, so things are drying like the second they touch the canvas. 
and this place is heating up without my air conditioner going right next to my workspace. Um, but we're gonna let this dry for a second and I will come back and we'll add our whole second half. So I will see everyone then. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background layer and a whole rainbow of colors on our piece of palette paper. I have some more white, fair amount, uh, as well as some black. And then I have cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, and cadmium red. A little bit of purple, aka violet. Some more of my cobalt blue. A little bit of phthalo green. And a little bit more of my burnt sienna brown. I rinsed my brushes and got some fresh water at break. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into things. I'm gonna do sort of like some sketching, but I'm going to do it with paint rather than a pencil. And we're gonna have a couple different elements now for our foreground. So we'll have a fence and then we'll have our surfboards laying against the fence. And then we'll also have a cute little palm tree over here on the right. So I think I'm going to start maybe about two thirds of the way over with a fence post. I'm gonna start with just a rectangle. I'm just using white here. I'm going to do a bit of sketching with this step. And I'm going to bring it fairly far down here into the sand, so like my slightly lighter, lighter sand. It doesn't have to be that tall of a fence. And then I'm going to build my fence, just moving from that point about two thirds of the way over. So I've left some room for my palm tree, but that'll give me enough fence to lay a couple surfboards against. And I'm just going to lightly with my brush, sketch out some rectangular shapes. And I'll have a little bit of peekaboo in between my fence posts so that you can see the background still a little bit, looks nice. And this doesn't need to be the world's nicest fence, but I'm going to try to make each one about the same size and we can adjust once we fill in with our color in just a bit. So rather than doing a whole nother layer, like a mid layer for these fence posts and painting them all brown and then adding our surfboards on top after letting that layer dry again, I'm going to do sort of a workaround. As I mentioned before, there's no real wrong way to go about a painting. So we're gonna do our fence as a sketch and then we'll sketch out our surfboards and then we will sort of work around the shapes to fill in with the base colors. All right, so working my way over however many fence posts you end up with is just fine. And looks like I'll have one that sort of comes off the edge. Everything will be adjustable once we start filling in. All right, and let me do my main surfboard shapes right now too. So I'm going to have one big tall one, kind of lean to the side. And I like to start with like a long oval, and then we're gonna make the front part of the board a little bit more pointed. Easier said than done, took a couple passes. <laughs> right over our fences, our posts, fence posts. Then I'll do one right next door, probably just about the same size. Even a couple long boards and a short board would be good. So your long boards are pretty tall, taller than this fence. And it might be a little confusing since we have some white in the background too, but things will make sense once we get everything filled in. And then I'll do a short board too, 
I'm gonna do pretty much the same shape. Long oval with a little bit more of a pointed, but still rounded top. All right, looking good. Let's go ahead and fill in some of these background colors now for our different shapes. Right, so I'm gonna start with mostly white. And I still have that same second to smallest detail brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna brown. And I think I'm gonna add some black as well. And make more of a gray brown. Perfect. Okay, and I'm going to use that as my main post color. And I'm going to go from left to right again and fill them in logically. So ideally, well, I guess not ideally, but usually and sometimes is easier to paint a full layer in the background like we did with the first step today so that you get all your brush strokes going in a nice direction and it makes sense as you paint it. But then you end up covering it a lot of times with stuff in the foreground. So we're just kind of saving time here a little bit. We're going to go around the shapes. This is like more what you would do with colored pencils or something. Pastels. Last time I tried to do pastels, I started with a background layer and then I realized that you have to do that with the whole thing. You gotta get a good sketch down and then you only get one pass at filling things in. It's not a matter of layering. I also sometimes do graphic design, which is also layers, so I totally forgot. <laughs> but back in art school, we did it, so I've done both ways. Working my way from one side to the other, just so that I can use this nice brown color first. I'm going around where I'm going to have my surfboard. And I'm going to try to keep the brush strokes going up and down. Okay, looking good. Always a satisfying step to get sketches filled in. All right. Leaving space for my surfboards. I will fill in in just a moment. All right, looking good. And don't confuse yourself too much uh, with your sketch. Remember which area is which. <laughs> it's not an emergency though. If you get a little bit of this brown color in one of your surfboards, Can easily still be treated from the background to the foreground. Um, you can just kind of block it out with white again or block it out with those background colors again. All right, I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a peekaboo so that that makes sense there because I'm almost fully behind my surfboard with that post. And same idea down here, I think I'll have a little bit of a peekaboo. And I do want to end at about the same level. So since I took that further down, I think I'll pull these guys down too for the sake of consistency. All right. OK, 
Okay, that's mostly behind the surfboard as well. We can tidy things up too if when we're filling in our surfboards, if we accidentally left a spot out, it's no problem. You can add that at any time. Always feel free to jump around and add whatever you feel like you need to your painting. All right, we're looking good. Now we must choose the base colors of our surfboard. It's very important. So I was thinking, you know, it's June, it's Pride Month, it's a rainbow themed <laughs> month that I hear in uh, the United States at least. Uh, everything is rainbow and I love rainbows and it can mean, you know, support of the LGBTQ plus community is wonderful or just good for any time uh, as well. Uh, just fun summertime painting. And the Pride flag colors though is a six color rainbow. Uh, so that rainbow, so we have three boards here. So I was thinking maybe two colors from that rainbow on each board. So if we were working our way through the rainbow, it would be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, and let's see, I think I'll start with orange. Since I'm doing my red orange, I think I'm gonna do an orange background. for this large board. And I wanna use plenty of white and also plenty of paint because we're not gonna have very good coverage power with this orange color without a little bit of white to make it more opaque. It's just not a very strong color. Beautiful, one of my favorites, but not a very strong coverage power from orange or yellow compared to like red or blue. So let's get a good first coat on as opaque as we can and use the opportunity to correct the shape if we need to as well. Ideally, we wanna not really have any sketch lines left once we get everything filled in. So that's a pretty good shape going to do some details with red on the second pass, but we're going to fill everything in with their base colors first. So that again, orange and red, and then we're going to do yellow and green, and then blue and purple. So let's do, hmm, I can't decide. <laughs> uh, let's do a green, actually, background. We're mixing it up today, going off book. I think, so my original, I had a yellow with green, but I love this green color so much, and I kind of want more green in my composition to balance things, just feeling it. So I'm gonna take this gorgeous phthalo green color, one of my favorites as well. And I added some white as well as some yellow. The phthalo has blue in it, which makes it this gorgeous aqua color that I love. But today I wanna to do that rainbow look with a true green. So we'll add a little bit of yellow there to counteract the blue. If you'd like to learn more about how to blend colors and what colors counteract what and which colors complement each other, and get some good practice on how to blend your colors. I do have a special course on color theory and it is available both on Skillshare as well as through my membership program now for members as well. To find out more about the membership program, that also comes with access to some intermediate courses as well as some other perks. You can click the join button and that should tell you more info there. And then to find the course on Skillshare, I left a link in the description below to check it out over there alternatively. Although on Skillshare, I don't have the intermediate courses. So that is a YouTube only perk, YouTube members only. The Saturday beginning level classes will remain free for as long as 
YouTube exists. <laughs> But we do have the now option of doing the membership programs as creators. So I wanted to put a little bit of extra stuff up there for you guys. Uh, and then also it's just a way to support the channel. And thank you very much if you are one of my members. Gorgeous. All right. Looking good. Our shapes are looking good. Our base colors are looking good. Our last one, we are going to do blue and purple. Since we have a lot of blue in our composition today, I'm feeling the purple as the main color. Let's see. If my white is clean enough, it works. Purple has a very good coverage power. It almost looks black when you put it on your palette. I just love it. I love bright colors, which you probably do too if you're here painting with me. <laughs> All right. Very satisfying for our final surfboard. Getting all of our sketch lines filled in with our next base color. Beautiful, the hard work is done. Give yourself a pat on the back. Just a home stretch from here. All right, and let's leave our gorgeous surfboards and fence alone for a moment and work on our cute palm tree. All right, before I do that, I do see one little floating area of my post that I didn't quite get all the way with the base color. Let me just fill that in real quick. Okay. But we're going to build our tree with a similar color to this brown. But I'm just touching things up real quick on my posts. But I'm going to bring more brown into it. So it's a slightly different color. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to do my main trunk shape, I suppose. That's what you would call that. First, and I did that in just one brush stroke. But then I'm going to go back and thicken it up a little bit. These are just a really quick and simple way to do palm trees. Always add a cute touch to our beach paintings. I think I have quite a few beach paintings now, but guess what? It's summertime and I got more coming. <laughs> I'm a beach girl who's living in the Southwest far away from the beach. So I gotta go there in my imagination. I believe I should be able to go on a vacation here pretty soon. I think probably in the fall to the coast. So looking forward to that. All right, just starting with the base of the palm tree. Really simple. Okay. And then let's make a green now that's not quite so bright. So I'm going to grab a little bit of a darker green to start. So I have my phthalo with yellow, so you can see that's a little more saturated. And I'm going to add a little bit of black and a little bit of white. I should get a little bit more of a natural green color. And a little bit of water too, because we're gonna need some nice fluidity for this step. So from the top, I'm gonna create a little, what I call crazy hairdo for our palm tree. And these curves are gonna come from the top 
I usually like to do five, but however you end up, however many you end up with is just fine. And have our sort of firework shape to start. Crazy hairdo. And then from there, think about how nature is gonna be pulling things down to the earth with gravity. Okay, so it's gonna be growing out either side, but you might just see one side of it, maybe a little bit from the other side, depending on the angle that you're looking at, the palm frond. Okay, but they're all still coming down. Think gravity. And very light hand in here, very soft touch. Very cute. Always coming down with the brush strokes. Very good first layer. All right, now let's go back to this little area and we'll finish things up over here. All right. And then here at the base, let's take a little bit of a beigey dark brown or sort of medium brown. And I added a pinch more yellow too, since we're gonna be working in the sand. So it's sort of like a dark sand color. And I'm gonna go right around where my posts are here in the sand and even around the surfboards too. And I'm going horizontally with these lines. Right underneath, so just a little bit of a shadow and the sand. And let's also take a little bit of that dark sand color and just add a little bit of interest here in the front. I have just a tiny bit of color on my brush. That's really all we need to do. And then let me take one more area with this color. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And I'm gonna do a little horizontal but slightly sloped shadow around my palm tree. Looks good. All right, and maybe we'll do some highlights too. So I'm gonna try to find a sand color again. I'm gonna add a space on my palette, sort of. <laughs> Feel free to use a second piece of palette paper. But I want to come in there and kind of tone things down if needed. And maybe add a little bit of variation sort of around. And moving into the background. And maybe in the front as well. Just kind of messing things up. <laughs> making them a little bit more interesting. Let's take our shadow color. I'm actually gonna make our little palm tree friend sort of on a hill. All right. I like to add these sort of deliberate squiggles sometimes. I find that that adds a nice little painterly feel. Okay, but things are coming right along. Let's see, let's go into our tree while we're over here. We'll finish things up over here while we let our surfboards dry for our final touches over there. So I'm gonna grab my dark brown color and do a quick outline of my tree. 
And that should give us a little bit more depth already. And another opportunity to sort of fine tune things a little bit. All right. And then I'm gonna take a lighter brown and go right down the center for a nice highlight in our tree as well. And let's also grab one shade lighter and I'm gonna do little flicks of the wrist pour some texture all the way up our tree add some interest there and a little bit of a sense of roundness all right and I think it would be nice to add a little bit of our shadow color right underneath those highlight marks too for an added layer of depth. And that looks pretty good for our trunk. I'm gonna grab a bit of white now into my green. And we're gonna make a highlight color for our palm fronds. So remember that color was this guy right here, which was our phthalo green with yellow as well as black and white. Apologize for all of the noises that come from my new downtown apartment. <laughs> I can hear uh, somebody leaf blowing as well as my neighbors running their water and my refrigerator. <laughs> I'm going to be getting a headset this week so hopefully that'll help. It's a little bit of that light green right on top. You can see how that adds just a nice secondary layer of color there and gosh it's so warm here. The paint is dry on my palette. <laughs> but that's fine, we'll call that good. Looks pretty good to me. All right, and let's finish off our surfboards. So for our orange board, I'm going to grab some red, and I'm going to try to do a stripe right down the center with the red. And I'm gonna come over that a couple times to try to get as straight of a line as I can. All right. Looking good. Very cute. For our outline color for our orange one, let's grab a little bit of like a burnt orange. So I'm going to just add a tiny pinch of brown to my orange. And we can use that as a sort of shadow outline color. Just to make things look nice and tidy. Pulled some red down there, but that's okay because we're working with a red brown anyway. Okay, very cute, very simple, easy way to finish that surfboard up. And let's do a quick outline now of our adorable green surfboard. So remember, we're doing green and yellow. But I want to do a quick outline with just a dark green. And feel free to use your very tiny brush if you need to. And it's okay if your 
surfboards are overlapping a tiny bit. Want to make it look like our, our surfers are laid back and they're not worried about lining up their surfboards in a perfect line. All right, so cute. For our second color, let's see if we can sneak a little bit of clean yellow over here and mix it with a bit of clean white. And I'm going to add a few stripes of yellow onto my green surfboard. It's going to be uh, diagonal lines. I like diagonal rectangles. So they'll go right to your outline. And they'll have like a straight edge on those sides as well. Okay, a little diagonal rectangle at the top, and let's do one at the bottom too. And I'm going to try to match the angle. So two diagonal matching rectangle friends for our green surfboard. And it's okay if you need two coats of yellow and if you see a little bit of green peekabooing through. Again, that yellow color doesn't have very good coverage power. I'm a little over the edge there, but it's fairly simple to just cover that right back up. With my dark green, I want to make sure everything is fairly neat and logical. A painting is the sum of its parts, so the details add up. All right, and then I'm just going to do a light blue element here on our purple. And since blue and purple are pretty close to each other tonally, I'm going to do a pretty light blue so that you can actually see the difference. And I'm going to do a fun little design here of like a rising sun. I'm going to start with a blue circle in the top center. And then I'm going to come in every direction with like a sunburst shape. And come up and around. with rays going each direction. And actually, this is a good time to use our teeny tiny brush to get some nice control. And that one got a little thick here. So we might thin things out a little bit with our purple again, which we can certainly do. wish that wasn't so loud. You can definitely hear it on the tapes. But I need to use daylight hours and everybody else is awake. <laughs> All right, but it's okay, we press on. Such is the reality of life and art. All right. Working from the top down, easily adjustable if need be. So my shape got a little crazy, but I like it. Can add a little bit more purple. Wow, that's already dry, okay. Can mix up a little more purple. and fine tune things a little bit if I'd like. Just go right in there. 
and work with those two colors back and forth until things are looking as neat as you can. But there's no such thing as perfection. Just try your best, and if it's good, it's good enough. That's what I always say. All right. A little bit tidier in there. Maybe a little bit of purple in here. I want that nice exaggerated sun ray look. Okay, and then just a quick outline of a nice dark purple. We'll finish our purple and blue. Rainbow colors. I may want to do one more coat of yellow on my green board. But I think that looks pretty cute. All right, let's do a little bit of fresh yellow on our green. You can put any other final touches that you might need to on your painting. That is the end of our class today. If you painted along, I would love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club where you can do just that. It's free to join and you can head over there and share your work with me and with the other students that are taking the classes. You can share what you're painting when you paint along with me or just whatever you got going on or whatever you're creating. I love to see it. It's the best part of my day. And thank you so much for joining us over there. If you're already there, we're almost three and a half thousand strong. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, and I really appreciate everyone sharing their art with me and with the other students. Uh, don't be shy. It's an amazing community full of a lot of really amazing supportive artists. And that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So. Until next time, happy vacation, happy beach days, <laughs> happy summer, and stay creative.